Women jugglers are rare throughout the world, except in the Asian Pacific Island group of Tonga, which is not far from Fiji. An entire country of nothing but women jugglers? How did that happen? I'm a professional juggler on an adventure to document the history of Hiko, a Polynesian culture where object manipulation of tui tui nuts is an ancient tradition, passed down from women to girls and where no men juggle. I'm thankful the tradition is still alive today, which I confirmed in January of 2012 when I visited Nukalofa, the capital of the self-governed monarchy of Tonga. Everywhere I go, every girl, every woman knows Hiko, knows how to juggle. I can hand the tui tui nuts that I carry with me in the back of my scooter and hand them to anybody, girl or woman, and they will light up and they will begin juggling two or three, sometimes four or five. All of the history is just oral. There is no written history. Everything is passed down from generation to generation. Part of this journey is just finding out what is Hiko? What does that tradition mean? How did it evolve? Why do all the women and girls juggle tui tui nuts? How did it become a dance at the Queen Salote College? Was it a competition at the schools? Why is it just girls? Why is it just women? I guess that's all part of recording the story of Hiko that is not recorded and finding what the story is. An American television juggler and performance artist is in Nukolofa researching the unique history and development of Tongan juggling. Connie Leverton from Texas is gathering information and TV footage so she can make a documentary back in the United States of America. While she's here, she'll visit villages and schools as part of her research. I think you're very unique in the entire world. There's no one like you. And I don't know if you know how unusual the Hiko is and the Tonga jugglers are here because only girls do it. And so there's an abundance of women jugglers here and it's beautiful. Since we grew up in primary school, we used to do Hiko. I start um, juggling with two and then go up to three and then four. But you know, I'm a big girl now, but I'm not really good in four now. <laughs> we learn from each other, from our elders. Where did you learn to do Hiko? When I was small, I think six, seven years. Did you have competitions or was it just play? Just play like this. We play and we learn the Hiko. As far as I know, the Hiko or the juggling was uh, a game done by girls. Every, every school and every you know, college here in Tonga, they do competition and then including the chuckle. A game, a competition, a song, a dance. It all revolves around throwing tui tui nuts into the air in a circular fashion called a shower, where juggling four to five is the norm and ten is the legend. The green fruit itself, they are the fruits that we use for juggling. The rhythmic song and words survive. It's not only melodic, but the perfect rhythm for juggling. The words are from ancient time. And some of the words, we just don't know the meaning. But we know that it's the company, the actual juggling. In 1972, there was a festival held among the colleges in the Queen's Hall of the College. We performed the Hiko. That was the first time we put movement into the Hiko song. On my next visit, I will venture into the smaller island groups, which stretch 250 square miles for a step back into time, searching for the untold story of Hiko from the beautiful women who live in another time era. I hope to find the verbal history still intact and a place where Hiko is played as a pastime without modern day technology distractions. I will keep you updated as I document this ancient tradition still alive after 3,000 years of Tonganese culture. Your donation will help with travel and editing. Thanks for your time and please share this link with others.